Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today I'm going to go over Fear Coast Triad. So let's get started. Fear Coast Triad helps us identify the three main factors for why a blood clot develops within the deep veins. So we can look at these risk factors identified by Fear Coast Triad and take preventative measures in our patients to prevent them from developing a blood clot. Now, DBTs tend to occur in the lower extremities like the legs, but they can occur in the upper extremities as well. However, when they occur in the lower extremities, they tend to have a higher chance of breaking off and turning into a pulmonary embolism. So what veins are most susceptible for a DVT? Well, this includes the veins of the pelvic area, the lower leg like the calf, and the thighs. So the specific veins are like the perineal and the posterior tibial in the calf, so our lower leg, and the popliteal and the superficial femoral, like in the thigh. So before we talk about the three main factors for why a blood clot develops, let's talk about how a blood clot actually develops and what substances are playing a role in forming this clot. So regardless of the cause that's identified by Fearco's triad, what happens is that platelets start to collect at the edges of the vessel. And this is usually within the cusp of the veins valves. And here in this picture, labeled as one, you will see the clot and it's around the cusp of the vein. Now, once platelets get on board, these chemicals start to be released called clotting factors. And you can see these are identified by these green little circles in this illustration. And clotting factors cause fibrin to be created. And fibrin causes the big problem because it's gonna allow our clot to form together. Because fibrin is like strands of like this mesh. And this will cause white blood cells, red blood cells, and more platelets to stick together within that vein and it's going to form this nice clump, AKA a clot. Now, unfortunately, what can happen is that this clot is going to continue to grow. And you can see in this illustration, labeled as two, that it's growing. And then if you look down at picture three, it's going to break off and it enters into circulation. And whenever it's in the vein, it's going to flow with wherever the blood flow is going with the vein. And we've learned that the venous system, it flows back to the heart. So this clot that's broke off is going to flow to the heart and it can enter into the pulmonary circulation and become a pulmonary embolism and cause serious health issues. Now to Fear Coast Triad. And just as the name says, triad, that means it's a group of three. So we have three main factors. And to help you remember those three main factors, remember the word she. So S stands for stasis of venous circulation, H is hypercoagulability, and E is endothelial damage. And whenever you have those type of factors presenting, you can get a blood clot. And that's demonstrated in this picture right here. This is a picture of a patient who has a blood clot. Notice the leg that's on the bottom, it's very swollen, it's red. I bet if we touched it, it would be very warm to the touch compared to the leg that's laying beside of it. This leg is not red and it's not swollen. So notice the differences. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the stasis of venous circulation. So we want our blood to flow. We don't want it to just hang out and become stagnant because if it does, it starts to congeal and clump together and that causes major problems. So blood has to flow back to the heart via the veins and it does this with the assistance of healthy vein valves and the muscles within the extremities. Like whenever you walk, your calf muscles help squeeze that blood back up to your heart. So if your vein valves are damaged or your muscles aren't working or they're just not being used, blood isn't going to flow back very well and clots can develop. So again, when blood hangs out together for a while, it will start to stick together because of those platelets. So think of some conditions that will damage the valves of the veins or where the muscles can't be used because this can lead to stasis of blood flow. So one cause would be a patient being immobilized, even paralyzed. Also varicose veins, we have an issue with the vein valves. We talked about this in our peripheral vascular disease video. Also surgery, especially hip or knee, traveling for long hours without moving the extremities, or some type of obstruction like late pregnancy, obesity, heart failure, like left ventricular dysfunction or atrial fibrillation. This is where the atrium are not really emptying very well and blood is just hanging out and clots can form. 
Then we have hypercoagulability. And just as the name says, hyper means high, increase, coag, that's dealing with the coagulation of our blood. So there's something in this patient's body that is causing their blood to have a high risk of clotting. And this is usually mainly due to a disease process presenting in that patient's body, or it can be due to other reasons. So for instance, cancer can cause this. Severe illnesses like septic, shock, sepsis. We talked about that in our video whenever we covered septic shock. Also dehydration, use of estrogen, birth control pills, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, and that postpartum period after a woman has a baby. And lastly, we have endothelial damage. And whenever you're thinking about these main factors for the development of a clot within that deep vein, you need to think of something that is causing either direct or indirect damage to that lining of the vein. But regardless of how it's affecting that endothelial lining, it's gonna stimulate the platelets and the coagulation process. So some things that can do that are IV drug usage. And I have seen this in patients who, you know, they're young and they're using IV drugs and they have blood clots. Also venipuncture can cause it. Indwelling devices in your patient, such as a central line, an IV line, or even a heart valve can cause a clot. And medications that are really hard on those veins or some type of trauma or injury to the vessel like surgery. Okay, so that wraps up this review over Fearco's Triad. And don't forget to check out the other reviews in this series.